Welcome back to another episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up this week, I've got a Matchbox Lesney number 9A Dennis fire truck. Now, this model debuted in the 1 to 75 series for Matchbox in 1955. I know this is a 9A variation because the front grille of this truck does not have any details. It's just a smooth casting. In later castings, they added actual grill details on the front. Um, overall, this one is not in bad shape. It's got a lot of high edge wear, play wear, but the model itself is fairly complete. It is missing one of the wheels uh, on the back of the ladder. Uh, that's another area where you can differentiate uh, different variations of this casting. These wheels are 12 spoke wheels. Uh, there were also some very, very early models that had 16 spoke wheels. And those are vaporware. They are impossible to find. But the 12 spoke wheels uh, with the squared uh, wheel edge is, is fairly common. And that's what we've got here. So this model, uh, being an earlier model, is a metal wheel. And uh, the casting itself is really fairly amazing. It's, it's all one solid piece. Um, and because there's not a lot of uh, prone areas on this, uh, these are usually found intact. And, and this one is mostly complete, like I said, with the exception of that one little wheel on the back. We do have a couple areas uh, on the tops of the ladders there where part of the casting is bent over and that's going to need to be fixed. Uh, but all in all, a great candidate for a restoration. So to begin our disassembly on this model, we're first going to need to remove all of the wheels, and there are six of them in this model. So uh, these axles use the crimped pin method on the end, and so we're going to use our typical uh, approach and try to cross crimp those the opposite direction and see if we can get the wheels removed. So I've gone ahead and crimped, cross-crimped all of these axles, and you can see that we've got sort of that square peg, round hole conundrum, um, but these will come off. They, they still need a little gentle persuasion, and uh, I like to use one of my little uh, pick tools to try to get in there, um, but with some firm, gentle pressure uh, against the backs of these wheels, they, they will pop off and can be removed. So. Uh, this method has really served me well. It lets me preserve the original axles and reuse them in the restoration. And uh, I'm glad it worked on this model. As you can see, the rear wheel is a little out of alignment. Um, it's not meant to be centered. It should be offset on the hub, but this one's really bent. And as small as some of these spokes are, I think the only way that I'm going to be able to adjust that is with a little heat from my torch. To clean up all the rust on the original wheels and axles, we're going to drop those into a little plain white vinegar to soak for a bit. I'm 
One of the few defects on this original casting is the, the bent um, little risers at the back of the ladder. And again, in order to adjust those and get those bent back straight, I need to add a little heat. Uh, without heating up the casting, it's very easy to make the, the die cast material brittle. And if you apply pressure to bend part of this casting, it'll just crack and break. And so I wanna add a little bit of heat and then be really sensitive to the casting um, as I try to bend it. If I feel like I'm getting too much resistance or it's not soft enough, I just need to reheat that area of the casting. Um, in order to do that, I'm using a little butane torch. Um, it's actually, it's something that um, has become a, a really useful tool in my little toolbox. Um, I actually purchased it uh, through a kitchen supply store and it's sold as a, a creme brulee torch or a, a torch used for uh, pastries and confections. But it works really well for stuff like this. It's just a, a click button point and shoot and uh, instant flame on demand. So. I'm going to heat up these two little tabs and just gently bend them back into alignment. With all of our adjustments made to the original casting, I've gone ahead and stripped the original paint. Um, this casting was actually fairly difficult to get stripped down. It's got lots of little detailed areas, uh, little grooves and lines. So it's gonna take a fair amount of time going over this with my dental picks and cleaning out the rest of the residual paint on, on here. So I'm gonna take a few minutes, work through this, get it all cleaned up and ready for paint. Paint on this casting is going to be fairly straightforward. I'm using a little of my gloss red testers enamel. Um, it's almost an exact match to the original color. I am going to add just a couple of drops of the gloss black just to darken it up a bit. If I had a jar of my gloss dark red, I'd probably be able to use it uh, straight out of the jar without making any adjustments. But trying to use what I got on hand. So I'm gonna start with my gloss red, add two, three drops of the black, and then of course my thinners in order to get it flowable and get it to run through my airbrush. To paint the casting, I've gone ahead and put it into a set of my little forceps. Um, these are great tools to have. I use them for a lot of different things, but they make it really easy to get a good grip on a, a small area of the casting so that I uh, make sure that I get most of it painted. Um, in order to get the best possible finish on this, I'm starting with just a light tack coat. And it's really hard to do on a casting like this because it has so many little nooks and crannies, little small areas um, that you end up, if you're not careful, you can get too much paint in those areas and you lose all the casting details. I'm also going to paint uh, the underside, the inside of this casting. Uh, it would not have been painted originally, but again, this is a restoration, so I can make it a little bit better than factory original. So we're going to start with this light tack coat. We'll let that dry for 20, 30 minutes, and then we'll go on to our finish coat. One of the new tools that I've added to my 
arsenal is a little toaster oven. Uh, it works great to bake the paint after I get a model coated. So I'm going to set it at 200 degrees for about 20 minutes and get a really nice finish on that. While I wait for the main casting to bake, I'm going to turn my attention to the wheels and axles and get those all cleaned up. Uh, these really, after the vinegar soak, came out pretty clean, and I think I'm going to be able to reuse all of them. Um, the wheels also cleaned up really, really nice. Um, as you can see, all four of these, uh, we were able to get all the last little residue of, of dirt and dust out of those and I think all those are going to be just great. Now, obviously one of the biggest issues with restoring this model was the, the rear uh, ladder wheel, the raising wheel on this. Um, this is a 16 spoke hub and I had one wheel on one side that had busted off, broken, and was, was missing. So I've gone ahead and I've ordered some replacement wheels. I uh, got these through modelcarparts.com. Uh, they are a Netherlands-based supplier, and I've had really good luck with their product in the past. Um, like usual, I, if I need one, I always order two, just because the, the quality of what you get is uh, varied. Sometimes I'll get really, really good pieces, and sometimes I get pieces that are going to need a lot of cleanup. So if I look at these, I've got this one wheel here that looks really, really nice. Uh, so I'm going to take a few minutes just to clean up some of the casting chaff and some of the little imperfections in here and see if we can get that nice and new looking. I'm not sure yet if I'll use uh, both of the replacement wheels or just one of the replacement wheels and the original wheel. Um, obviously, I'm gonna take the time to clean them all up and I'm gonna pick my best two out of the three that I have now. And that's what will go on the finished model. I have noticed also that the replacement wheels, uh, the material is a little bit softer. I believe these are actually cast in pewter rather than die cast. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I have a little bit of experience with uh, pewter spin casting in the past, and this is uh, about the same consistency as those, so I believe that's how these parts are, are actually produced. Um, so we're going to take a few minutes, get these all cleaned up, and paint it up to match the rest of the model. In order to paint these, I need to uh, suspend them or hold them on some type of aperture. And so to do that, I'm just using a toothpick and I'm go right in the hubs. That'll help me keep the, the hubs clear paint, make sure everything still fits nice, and it gives me something to hold on to while I spray them. With our main casting dry now, I can turn my attention to adding back some of the details on this. This uh, this casting would have originally had some gold paint uh, trim details on this, and I want to try to be as true to the original as I can. So I've gotten my standard collector's guide out here, and I want to look up this particular casting. And when I started, I believe this to be a 9A because the casting doesn't have the details on the front grill. The 9B had the grill details on it, so I believe this is a 9A. Once I've identified what variation the casting is, I can flip back in my uh, standard guide to the detail page on that. And that will give me a few more um, things that I can reference, uh, the casting of the driver, whether or not there is a break below his arms and his legs. Um, this one had a very small break that's kind of been filled in with paint, um, but if it has uh, no break, it's a B, it's closed arms, and if it's open, then it's an A. Um, so in this current condition, this would be a B because it has the closed arms. Secondly, you want to look at the uh, wheels on the back, what the diameter is and what the profile of the edge of that wheel. The early ladders were a squared edge. The later ones had a rounded front. Um, and the, the wheels that I have 
all have the rounded edge. So that's going to make this a 9A with a B driver and a B 13 millimeter diameter rear wheel. The reason that I want to take the time to go through and identify all those different things about this casting is I want to make sure that the trim details that I put back match what this model would have had originally. Um, different variations and, and at different time periods that this casting was produced, uh, different pieces uh, were painted different ways. And so with a 9A BB, um, I want to paint all the same areas that this would have had originally. Uh, to start, I'm going to hit the hose reel and the windscreen and the driver's helmet. Uh, most of these castings, those are all the details that would have been uh, trimmed out with the gold to begin with. Some of the very, very early models also had the top of the ladder painted as well. Um, and since this, I think, is a, a later run of a 9A, um, I'm not going to paint the top rails of the ladder. I also, when I got this, while it wasn't in great shape, um, it was not missing all of the trim details. So I know, you know, for sure, those areas that did have gold trim on it when I got the casting, and I know areas that there weren't there, there wasn't any evidence of gold trim, and I didn't see any on the, the top edge of the ladder. Now, granted, it's a, a high edge area, and it, it would have worn off um, probably pretty quickly after it came out of the box, but uh, since I didn't see any evidence of it, and I'm dating this a little bit later in the production, we're going to leave off the paint on the top of the ladder and just paint out these other de details. Something new I wanted to try on this casting was a, uh, a gloss clear coat or top coat after I had all the details painted out. Um, to do that, I'm using this Createx gloss top coat. I've tried uh, various clear coats in the past, um, even the, the testers clear, because usually I like to stay with the same brand for the base coat and the clear coat. And I've had really poor results with the testers clear coat. Um, but this Createx, I've heard good things about it, and I used some of their other paints before, some of their metallics. So we're going to give a shot uh, with this gloss clear and their high performance reducer and see what sort of results we can get. After the coat of gloss clear, this went back into the oven to bake for another 20 minutes at uh, 200 degrees. And that I found has, has really produced a nice hard finish on the paint. And that's really important uh, to me for just the longevity of the casting in the model. But I've got really good results on the wheels. Um, I was a little worried, as fine detail as some of these are with uh, both the base coat of paint and the, the gloss clear on them, I was worried that they might uh, obscure too many of the, the details and you'd lose the look of those original wheels. Um, I did go ahead and paint up all three of the wheels and uh, again, not knowing what the, the best 
results were going to be on them. I figured I'll do all three up and then we'll pick our best two of the three before we do our reassembly. I'm going to start with the uh, ladder wheels at the rear of the casting and uh, we're just going to test fit all these pieces to make sure that everything goes in nice and smooth. Um, I did have a little trouble getting this axle off and so I kind of anticipated that it, it may be a tight fit going back on as well. So we'll get, uh, get all these pieces test fit up and you can see I've kind of poked out a little paint goober there. That's why I was having some difficulty going in. But uh, that looks like it's going to work really, really well. Um, in order to reattach these, I'm just going to go back and uh, recrimp the axles in the original direction that they would have come from the factory. We'll undo that cross crimp, that squaring up that we did so that we could uh, take the wheels apart. And that's a pretty nice finish, and that wheel's nice and tight. It's not going to come off. So we're going to go ahead and get the main wheels on as well. Uh, same method here. Uh, I always want to kind of pick what my good side of the wheel is, make sure that the good side of the wheel is out. Um, I also like to have all of my crimps on the same side of the casting. That way I've got one nice finished side if I want to display it that way and uh, can keep all of the crimped edges on the back side of the casting as well. To crimp these, I'm just using my uh, plain needle nose pliers. Uh, some castings in the past, I've actually had to use a pair of vice grips as well just to get a little more strength in there, but it really depends on the axle and how strong it is. Uh, these tend to be a pretty soft metal, and uh, sometimes I, I do need to come back and carefully file the edge just the crimp, cross crimp, and recrimp tends to stretch the metal out, and sometimes those crimped ends get a little bit long. Um, so I just use my, my detail file to come back and clean up uh, any of those edges that are too rough or too long. Um, again, I'm trying to go for what the original look of the casting would have been. So I put in our last wheel on here. Uh, again, it's, it's important to find the correct orientation. Uh, you want to make sure that you crimp it back to what it was originally and not deepen the cross crimp on it. Um, and that looks pretty good. Wheel fills pretty tight. So we are going to go with that. So here's a quick reminder of where we started out with this casting. We were missing one of the rear ladder raising wheels. Uh, some of the, the tabs on the top of the ladder were pretty far bent, had a lot of uh, paint loss on this, um, and just a lot of high edge wear, very well loved casting. And here is our fully restored to original condition Matchbox Lesney number 9A Dennis Fire Escape. This was really a fun project and just reminded me how much I really love working on these older metal wheel models. Uh, the castings have so many details and they're just a lot of fun to do. Uh, this one is really turned up just great. And I'm, I'm really pleased with the gloss clear coat on this. I know it makes it a little bit different than the original just because it, it does have a lot more shine than the, the original would have had, but uh, definitely makes it a showpiece in my collection and a standout among all the different restorations that I've done. I also like that it gives a little protection for some of those gold trim details, so I, I don't have to worry so much about those wearing off in the future. Uh, this this little piece, you know, it's close to 50 years old, and it's going to last at least another 50 years with this restoration. So as always, let me know what you think. If you enjoyed the video, leave me a comment down below. Click that subscribe button if you want to keep up with this and all of our future restorations. And as always, join us next week for another Vintage Diecast Restoration.